Hey guys, it's Laura here again. Welcome to another video and let's get into it. Today's video is on the major fashion brand Gucci. Gucci is one of the most renowned and influential luxury brands in the world today. A genuine global reference for fashion and accessories and a benchmark for a modern innovative business. Gucci reached its centenary in 2021. The brand has surpassed family feuds, takeover attempts, a near bankruptcy and even a murder, which is all documented in the new film starring Lady Gaga at House of Gucci. But how did Gucci become the brand that it is today? Guccio Gucci founded the famous fashion house in Florence, Italy in 1921. Born on March 26, 1881, to a simple Italian leather goods maker, Guccio Gucci founded House of Gucci. It was a small family-owned leather goods boutique. As a young man, Guccio worked at the luxurious Savoy Hotel as a porter in London, where his initial interest in leather goods was established. He found himself drawn towards the upper class, guests' opulent suitcases and bags. Paying homage to his familiar roots, he eventually returned to his native Florence to work for Franzi, a Tony luggage brand. In 1901, Gucci married Aida Cavelli, a 24-year-old dressmaker and tailor's daughter. One year later, his daughter Grimelda was born. Gucci and Ada had four more children, all boys. Enzo, born 1904. He died in childhood. Aldo, born 1905. Vasco, born 1907. And Rodolfo, born 1912. Years later, Gucci was ready to strike out on its own. And in 1921, he opened his eponymous leather goods store in Florence. As the business grew, Gucci was able to expand the small workshop at the back of his store and hire a more skilled level of artisans to work on the custom bags. Targeting the richest population of Florence, Gucci factory quickly turned into producing horse harnessing. Horse sports at the time were considered elite, thus only the richest people quickly recognised Gucci brand and with little competition Gucci factory lifted to the new level. But according to the Women's Wear Daily, in 1935, they hit a snack. There was a League of Nations embargo against Italy, and with leather in short supply, the brand was forced to use different materials, especially woven canapa or hemp, was created and Gucci's now famous interlocking diamond symbol was printed on top. Gucci enlisted his three sons, Aldo, Vasco and Rodolfo, to join the business in 1938 and they were tasked with expanding the brand's presence, bringing Gucci to Rome and eventually Milan in later years. Production of leather goods resumed after World War II and Gucci's son Aldo introduced the pigskin, which became a signature house material. The first bamboo handheld bag inspired by the shape of a saddle is thought to be produced in this period. In 1948, Maurizio Gucci was born to Rodolfo and his wife Alessandra. In 1951, Rodolfo opened the first Milan store on Via Monte Napoleon. Around this time, the green red green web became a hallmark of the company. In 1953, a pioneer of Italian design in the US, Aldo Gucci opened the first American store in the Savoy Plaza Hotel in East 58th Street in New York. Guccio Gucci died at age 72, 15 days after the New York store opening. As an Italian native, Guccio hoped to keep the brand exclusively on Italian soil. He didn't want to venture out of Italy, but was ultimately convinced by his son Aldo. The Gucci loafer with metal horse bit was created that year and in 1985 it would be displayed at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, becoming part of the permanent collection. The house's crest became a registered trademark in 1955. After the loss of their father, the company was left to his five sons. His daughter Grimelda was left without a role, as he believed women should not be in the workplace. The company was split into three parts among Gucci's eldest sons. Aldo continued to oversee Gucci's expansion abroad, as well as all major business decisions, while Rodolfo managed the Milan store and Vasco run a new factory just opened in Florence's Old Trano district. The Gucci brothers fought to maintain control of the company, which produced palpable familial conflict that carried on for another generation. Nevertheless, Gucci persisted. After his death in 1953, his family was able to take the enormously successful company to new heights by opening stores in Paris, Beverly Hills, London, Palm Beach and Tokyo. 
The 1960s brought increased fame to the Gucci empire. Such Hollywood stars as Grace Kelly, Peter Sellers and Audrey Hepburn made the name Gucci synonymous with chic. Jackie Kennedy helped by being photographed with Gucci shoulder bag, which subsequently became known as the Jackie O. The company adopted the GG logo. In 1966, the Flora Scarf was designed for Princess Grace of Monaco, commissioned by famed artist Vittorio A. Cornero. The resulting print became a Gucci signature that features 43 types of flowers, plants and insects, depicted through a vivid array of 37 colours. The logo of two interlocking Gs was also introduced around this time as a sweet homage to founder Guccio Gucci. In 1975, Gucci even entered the beauty space with their debut fragrance, Gucci No. 1, which continues to be a stronghold for the company till this day. In 1981, Gucci hosted their first ready-to-wear fashion show at Sala Bianca Palazzo Pitti in Florence. The theme of the runway was the classic flora pattern. Needless to say, it was a huge success. However, with this came a lot of rivalry within the family. For the next few decades, Gucci underwent several major changes, as well as some drama. Guccio's grandchildren were working at the company by the early 80s, and the family was feuding about who would be in control. Eventually, Rodolfo's son Maurizio took over, pushing his cousins and uncle Aldo out of the company. Maurizio soon brought bankruptcy to the company, and so in 1989, Investcorp purchased half of the brand. The first big change in Gucci's revamp was Dawn Mello being assigned as the first creative director, along with a whole new team included Richard Lambeston as design director, Neil Barrett designing menswear and Tom Ford as the designer of the women's ready-to-wear collection. Tom Ford worked his way up and in 1994 he became the brand's creative director. The following year, Maurizio Gucci sold the other half of his shares to Investcorp and in the same year was murdered on March 27, 1995. Maurizio Gucci was gunned down in front of his office in Milan. For nearly two years, the identity of Maurizio's killer remained a mystery until it was revealed that his ex-wife, Patrizia Reggiani, through her spiritual advisor, had hired a hitman to end his life. The year Maurizio died, Gucci went public on the New York and Amsterdam stock exchanges as the company thrived under the lead of CEO Domenico De Sol and Ford, dubbed the Tom and Dom Dream Team, becoming architects of the ultimate luxury brand revival. The designer infused the brand with an overt sex appeal and at the time couldn't be found on another runway. The slinky slip dresses and sexy stilettos stood in stark contrast to the minimalist trend of the 90s and were totally embraced by consumers. His full 1995 collection and sleek minimalist 90s designs were a massive commercial success and celebrities like Gwyneth Paltrow, Jennifer Lopez and Madonna were all photographed wearing his pieces on the red carpet. In 1995, the iconic Jackie bag was relaunched with a few updates, quickly becoming the new must-have item that year. In the late 90s, LVMH slowly started purchasing shares of the company, despite pushback from Gucci's then CEO Domenico De Sol. However, before the company took over completely, investor Francois Pinol of Pinol PPR strategically became the major stakeholder. PPR would later be renamed Kering in 2013, and Gucci remains a part of the conglomerate today. Tensions built between the new management and Ford and DeSalle, who eventually left the company in 2004, after trying and failing to strike a deal for management, financial and creative independence. In 2002, Frida Giannini, previously handbag designer for Fendi, joined the label's accessories department, contributing bold reinventions of house signatures as part of Ford's design team. As noted by Business of Fashion in 2006, Giannini was named creative director and her relaunch of the flora pattern instead of focusing on the double G logo proved massively successful. In 2008, Gucci aired its first ever TV campaign for the Gucci by Gucci scent, which was directed by David Lynch. 
Gucci by Gucci put on Giannini's first men's scent, launched with campaign star James Franco that same year. The now iconic Flora by Gucci fragrance was launched in 2009. In December 2014, following a slowdown in sales, DeMarco exited the company, followed a month later by Giannini. Alessandro Michel, who had already devoted 12 years to the brand, was then announced as the new creative director. The appointment of the relatively unknown accessories designer came as a shock to many within the industry. In his first move as creative director, Michel helped design an entirely new menswear collection in less than a week. According to the New York Times, his first women's wear collection debuted a month later on the Milan runway and was an instant success. Marco Bizzari was also brought as the new president and CEO of Gucci following DeMarco's exit. In six years, Alessandro Michel has turned the Gucci empire inside out. Michel filled the high fashion runway into a childlike fantasy with bees, hearts, bows, brooches, flowers, ruffles, pop culture references and other maximalist designs and symbols. However, Michelle tries to stay true to Gucci's origins while still evolving with the times. In 2017, Gucci pledged to promote gender equality, diversity, become sustainable and provide a caring working environment, contributing to positive social impacts, supporting transformation all while continuing craftsmanship traditions. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you liked learning about the major fashion brand Gucci. And if you want to learn more, be sure to watch House of Gucci out on Thanksgiving. If there's any other artist or designer's life you want to learn more about, please leave it down in the comments below. I would really appreciate if you would like the video, please subscribe and put your notifications on so that you can be notified for when I next post. See you on the next one. Bye.